Good morning, dear audience. It is my pleasure to welcome you today to this Bright Talk webinar in which you are going to learn how knowledge powers your service and can represent an important step on your digital transformation path. But first, let me introduce you to Helen Shell Gordon, who is a certified KCS trainer and consultant at Comeround. By the way, KCS stands for Knowledge Centered Service. It's a methodology for knowledge management. Helene helps organizations succeed with knowledge management by offering training and consultancies based on her best practices. Thank you. You're welcome. Me, by the way, I am Pierre Le Gentil. I am an account executive at Sharewell Software, and I'm home-based in the area of customer journey experience since about 15 years. Thank you, Pierre. I'm sorry for my voice today, but I've had a cold, so mm -hmm. I hope I will manage through the whole session. We can hear you fine. Good. So today, everything is about service. Whether internal or external services, you need to deliver more, faster, and higher quality than ever before. The bottleneck in your service delivery is a lack of automation, a poor self-service experience, and no transparency in your processes. In addition to a world-class process-driven service automation platform, you can deliver a world-class experience with the power of knowledge management. So can you imagine how effective your service delivery to your organization and your customers could be if you enable the power of knowledge to everybody who needs it at the time they need it? So empower your service delivery by combining service automation with a relevant knowledge base. That's what we will talk about today. Perfect. Thank you very much, Helene. So by the way, you have the opportunity and the possibility to ask questions, so please do it. However, we will take those questions at the end. If time is uh, not serving us well, obviously, we will uh, simply get back to you in the next two days to make sure everything gets answered. So, but before we start, we will give you a brief introduction into whom you're listening to, and I'm not talking about Helen and myself, but more about the companies that we work for. So, let me introduce you to Chairwell Software. Founded in 2004, we have gone to market in 2007 and have grown ever since organically to an organization of around about 500 employees, serving customers worldwide and operating out of nine global offices. And depending on their chosen criteria, leading analysts, such as uh, Gartner, IDC, Forrester, always place us in the top three or top two of their ranking for enterprise and IT service management. So, Helen, would you mind sharing some insights about Comeround? I will. Thank you. So, Comeround has long experience working with knowledge management and self-service, going from print to books back in 1999 to be one of the leading cloud services with a knowledge management and self-service tools. Our tool, Comeround Knowledge, is one out of five tools that are KCS V6 verified, which means that our functionality complies with the requirements within the knowledge management methodology, KCS, that you mentioned before. We have customers and partners all around the globe, and in addition to our tool, we provide training, certification, and consultancy within knowledge management. Great. And I think when you see the history of Comeround, that's a great example of a digital transformation. You guys started with printing, printed books. Actually, I talked, I spoke to your CEO who explained to me that they serve customers and realized that when they learn something, they still need a handbook and those manuals didn't exist for Windows and everything back yeah. in the days. And nowadays, those things are all online and this is just one small part of all the services you offer. So that is really the transformation and the way to uh, work on a market. So I'm really happy to have the opportunity to speak with you guys. Thank you. We actually have some com customers still with us that started off with books and now they are still with us with the, with the cloud service. That continuity. Yes, they might uh, have had a break in between, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they will have read the book, so that is all good. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So... It's an easy, you know, it's really easy to say that today's businesses run on technology and that a business ability to succeed is contingent on its ability to achieve digital transformation. But what sometimes gets forgotten is that the technology in itself is not the end game because the goal of any digital maturation effort is to leverage technologies to better serve people for the technology to integrate into people's lives in a way that is informed, 
pragmatic and timely. We need to keep one thing in mind. Most digital natives, so I talk about people who experience the use of digital data from an early age, are used to leverage technology in their day-to-day -day lives to accomplish various goals. So in order to make sure that people consume services, they need to be easy accessible in a way that they are used to from their private lives. And in a world where people interact with hundreds of technologies every day, better serving people through technologies requires smarter processes and better integrations. So what do people expect from services nowadays? They expect their service experience at work and in their everyday lives, that people expect to accomplish more in the day. People expect technology to work for them, not the other way around. That is a really important thing. People also expect processes to evolve as their needs and contexts change. So services need to be, first of all, more easily adapt and respond to the ever-evolving needs of teams and businesses. Services also need to seamlessly connect multiple systems and service processes. They need to provide transparency to understand and improve performance and effectiveness of services. And last but not least, services need to deliver the capacity to innovate new services based on the rapidly changing needs of the business. In our experience, actually, there are three steps to digital transformation, and most of you will have lift them one way or another. The first one is what we call digitization. That means simply turning non-digital items like pictures into JPEGs or purchase orders into PDF digital documents, whatever you want, turning something physical into something digital. The second one is the digital digitalization. And that simply means the use of digital data. So you turn that data digital and now you use it. And the digital transformation itself is the third step. And this is where you start to change and optimize your processes with the help of solutions that enables companies and people to leverage the use of digital data. One of the main areas here to enable self-service support as is translates to the data into answers and solutions to anyone within an organization. In my opinion, knowledge management is the key to that. Wouldn't you say so, Helen? Yes, I would, for sure. And uh, just like this picture states, um, your knowledge is your biggest asset as an individual as well as an organization. So providing top service and support to your customers is a part of your offering and also something that can differentiate your company from others. So naturally, you need to make sure that the support and service you provide to customers is at least as good as the services you provide, uh, and that your organization learns something from the interactions that you have with your customers, so that you can improve your services even further. And the interactions here, in this case, uh, support interactions, which are most commonly tracked via incident management systems, but it uh, can be any other tool used to track interactions with the customers, project management tools or chats and so on. So but what makes excellent support possible in the first place? Well, I would say the experience and expertise you have within your company, which is what we call knowledge. So the next question is, is your organization taking care of that knowledge in the best possible way? And are you reusing it in an efficient way? So how can we benefit from our organization's collective experience in every interaction with our customers? Well, our experience is that many organizations underestimate the power of their knowledge. And I don't mean the knowledge of the people in the organization, but rather how the organization takes care of it to really take advantage of it. It's quite common to say when someone is about to leave the company that, oh, you have to write down everything you know before you leave. But wouldn't it be better if everyone did that every day so others could benefit from it every day? And you can do that with a relevant knowledge base that reflects the collective knowledge of your organization. With a relevant knowledge base, you can really empower your service delivery. 
And I often hear companies say, but, but we have a knowledge-based tool, okay, but are you using that knowledge-based tool in the majority of all interactions within support? And by that I mean, are your support teams referring to relevant knowledge-based articles when they get questions or issues reported from the customers? Helen, when you ask those kind of questions, I think you probably uncover really often that it is not the case, right? Yes, for sure. I mean, most companies have knowledge bases, and I would say they have too many. Yeah. You know, each individual has one because you know that the common one is not really good, so you yeah. build your own. Each team has one and so on, and it's time-consuming not knowing yeah. where to go and, and to spend time searching. It's a cost for any organization if you look at it from a big perspective. Yeah. And for the individuals, it's annoying. Ah, I would imagine so. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and like you mentioned before, Pierre, so everything is not about tools. I mean, the tools should enable us to achieve what we want to achieve. So at the end of the day, satisfy customers in one way or the other. The same thing applies to knowledge. So there are many great knowledge management tools on the market today, and technology is improving fast. So, but before we move on, I just want to stop and look at the word knowledge management for a second. Knowledge management can be described as the process of creating, sharing, using, and improving knowledge and information in an organization. And here, I would like to emphasize the word improving. That's where many organizations fail, I think. A knowledge base should be alive, it should be active, it should be improved and updated every day. Only then can it reflect the collective knowledge that you have in your organization today. So, but not even the best knowledge management tools in the world will get you there without the process of knowledge. So, in order to create, share, use, and improve your knowledge, you need a process, you need a workflow. That's when you can really take advantage of everything you learn from the customer's experience with your services. And that's how you can also improve and empower them. That makes a lot of sense, absolutely. So with that said, I would like to bring up some key questions that I think are important for any company to consider. So do you have a process for knowledge? Well, I mean, I understand from what you say that knowledge is something really important. But why would it make sense to have a process aligned to it? Well, with a process of knowledge, I mean, do you capture, structure, use, and improve your knowledge in an efficient way that is known and used by your support and service team every day and all the time? As an example, so do you have one common knowledge base, which is the first place people go to when they need to solve an issue or just help the customer? because they know that they will find relevant and updated information there. Yeah, that makes sense. And actually, you mentioned earlier the fact that many have those many different bases. I mean, I know that from my own experience, I have had many teams where we had our own knowledge, and it's, it wasn't really accessible for anyone. So, of course, if we can consolidate this, it makes sense to me that that yeah, would help. It Absolutely. Does. And you need to have a process to do that. Yeah. Because if you let people do what they want, then that is what will happen. You have <laughs> like as many knowledge bases as you have people. Yeah, too much freedom kills the freedom sometimes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so the second question is, do you act upon the things you learn from your customers' experiences with your services? I mean, obviously, listening to your customers is absolutely crucial. And I mean, we do that every day. And it's not only us. I mean, I'm sure that many people in the audience share a lot of information with customers and try to receive as much back as they can. But how is this connected to a knowledge base? Well, your knowledge base will tell you what problems and issues your customers are experiencing and what the most common problems are in detail. I mean, many organizations track this in their incident management system, but they group them. And in the knowledge base, you can see it in detail. That's a big difference. So the data on, for example, most viewed articles or most searched for in the knowledge base will give you very valuable insights. And use that data to improve your services or to remove reoccurring problems, no matter how big they are. Uh, I mean, it's, it's great if we can help a customer solve their problems with our great support teams. 
But wouldn't it be even better if they didn't have to experience the problem at all? Absolutely. And I think when you talk about collecting data, a few things pop up into my mind. I, like everyone else, I have those uh, membership cards or whatever that I use when I buy something and I get some points and can buy something. And this is just an investment from some companies to understand more my behavior, to yeah. get some personal data out of me. And they're willing to pay for it because actually they do something. So what I'm hearing when you say that is, as a company, we do have this already in that we just need to collect the data and we don't even have to incentivize it. We just have to make sure people are using it to have the power of that data and that knowledge at the end. Yeah, exactly. This is awesome. And you can, I mean, data is everywhere. You just need to track it and analyze it and then do something about it. Act, yeah. act upon it. Otherwise, the data is not worth anything. And in most systems today, you can track anything, you can record anything in there, and you can get the data out and you can do something about it. So I think, I mean, if you can analyze your knowledge base, for example, and see what people search for and see what, what, what do they do next after that, you can see, okay, so we have some, some, some questions that are connected to the first question they had. How do they move on in the knowledge base? Both your customers, if you have self-service, so you offer the knowledge base to them, but also your agents, your employees. If you're a big company and you have 500 support agents, the, the best way to see what they are actually doing is in the knowledge base. What are they looking for? What kind of information do they need? And do they find it? That reminds me a little bit of something that one of your founders, Magnus, said he talked about predictive support. Yeah. So I think that empowers that. It does, for sure. Right. So you can then tell, okay, so... If they are searching for this now, they will probably have these problems next. Yeah. So if you can prevent that, that's the best scenario ever. Great. So the last question here, or the, the, the last point here, is is your knowledge base content structured? Would that have to be important? Because, I mean, in my understanding, I mean, I'm, I'm going just from the, the knowledge bases that I built myself. And for me, I had my content, so... I have my tags or whatever. I know more or less what I can find. And uh, you're telling me there is probably a more efficient way to do it, right? Uh, yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we are discussing service automation, and you mentioned self service support in the beginning today. So if you want to improve the customer support experience by offering your customer self service support as an additional channel for support your knowledge base content has to be structured. Otherwise, they will not find what they're looking for. And if you're looking into using support bots or virtual agents for support, structured information is crucial. So it's both on a high level, but also in terms of titles and general article structure. So we're talking, how do you phrase your articles? What words are you using? Because you need to match the search phrases of your customers in some service with the knowledge articles in your knowledge base. Otherwise, you know, they won't find it. That makes sense. And I think you mentioned something really important when you're talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and the bots. And please, in the audience, don't be afraid of Skynet. It's not coming. We're talking about ways to improve your lives and not really to destroy it. But seriously, so if we talk, if we talk about those bots, they have to act on data that is there. And the better structured it is, the quicker it can give answers and give really the impression to the user that he is actually talking or chatting to a real person rather than to a bot. And mm -hmm. I think that is the experience that everyone wants to give to their customers the sooner or later. And uh, I understand from what you say that actually this will only work really well if you have a structured knowledge base. Yeah. So actually, it's not only something that is nice to have, but it is really a crucial step on the digital transformation path that we have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can say intelligent knowledge, but where is the intelligence? I mean, you need to give it something to learn from. Yeah. And what you give the bot or whatever you're using need to have structure. Otherwise, you know, whatever goes in will come out. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And another thing, um, just to check, did you pay attention to me saying improving the support experience 
when referring to self-service support? Well, I heard that. Yes. So when we talk about self-service, uh, we're not talking about call avoidance or case deflection or anything. Self-service is customer engagement, and I think everyone should offer that to their customers. That makes a lot of sense, and I think you're making your point quite clear on this point. <laughs> and I think if we want to see, if we want to have a great experience, well, uh, we should probably also think about the service delivery. So probably you want to say something about that too. Yes. So you can really empower your service delivery with knowledge by having an efficient process for knowledge, which we have mentioned already. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I can only guess that some people get the shivers just thinking about one more process. Yeah, that's Don't true. Don't <laughs> we have enough of those? No, they're great. <laughs> they're absolutely great. If they're implemented right with a clear goal, a process for knowledge will really empower your service delivery. And there's no need to reinvent things here. So the KCS methodology, which is what we are working with and we are teaching our customers and others, um, it has developed for the last 25 years and it's based on best practice. So that is one tip, obviously coming from me as a KCS trainer. And I guess you know what you talk about. <laughs> yes, I do, but I'm learning every day. Great, yeah. <laughs> so you manage your knowledge too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> So the second point is using tools that support your processes. And this may sound obvious, but I still think it's easy to adapt to the tools rather than the other way around. And you mentioned that earlier as well. So the question is, what do you want to achieve? A tool should help you achieve that. Yeah. That's the most important thing here. So to put it simple, make it easy for everyone to do the right things. Yes. That's the way you should set up your tools. Um, and we will get back to that as well in, um, in a little while Perfect. through the webinar. So the last uh, point here, adapting to the changing yeah. environment. So your customers, the market, the industry, your competitors, and everything change at increasing speed. So be adaptable and flexible. Learn from experience and throughout the journey refine and rethink your processes and your tech environment. You know, if, is there anything else you can do to make it even easier to do things better? And this brings us on to the next part of the webinar, where we will talk about seamless workflows to improve the experience for your customers and for your service and support team, because they are just as important as your customers because if you don't have them, you won't have any customers. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, I would like to say a few things about the, the adapting to the changing environment thing. One of my favorite quotes is, if you always do what you already can, you will always be what you already are. Now, please, do not get me wrong. I don't want to get anyone uncomfortable with who they are today. But I mean, as you mentioned yourself earlier, you are learning every day. And uh, the goal in personal life is always to improve, to see more, to, I don't know, see more countries. This is changing also. Yeah. And uh, when you think about it in business terms, and come around is a great example for that, you have to adapt to a certain market. You have to adapt to changes in the market, and you always need to rethink yourself. So even though changes can look a little bit uh, like something that we don't like because we have our comfort zone and this is mm. a nice place to be in, it is really crucial that businesses understand that staying the same way they are for years and decades will not get them further. So I think we don't need to emphasize it more, but I'm really 100% with you and I'm sure that people that you talk about, uh, that you talk to, will see it exactly the same way. Mm. So... For the next thing that I want to talk about is, it's clear that if we have a functioning knowledge base, we can do something. But obviously, we need a platform that will empower things. So let me give you a brief overview of the Chairwell platform. So if we look at it, at the technology that you could and should use for it. So consider the Chairwell platform as the heart of your services. 
providing adaptive experience through efficient self-service SOFA portals that would be powered by a good knowledge base, obviously, eliminating unnecessary steps through intelligent automation, creating visibility through dashboards and analytics, and also supporting development in configuration management, and give you easy ways to roll out extensions through our mergeable applications technology. So let me talk a little bit about the mergeable applications technology. What we offer is the possibility to develop own tools on the Chairwell platform. And when I say develop, I mean codeless developing. And uh, this is not just something we state, it is something that it is. So we really talk about point and click and drag and drop, creating applications and uh, creating extensions like exactly the come around knowledge base is. Uh, an app that combines perfectly, seamlessly, and codelessly with the Chairwell platform. And uh, this being said, I think we should have a look at what this extension brings us to us. There is a portal and much more to it. Helen, maybe you want to share something about that. Yes, thank you. So this is uh, our tool, Camera Knowledge, from an end user perspective. So for the people that we consume the knowledge via self-service. So this interface is offered in 18 different languages and so is our pre-packed content. So meaning we have a lot of content, uh, knowledge articles for common applications and systems. So that is also offered uh, in, in 18 different languages. So stop right here. So that means if I am a global organization, mm -hmm. I can make sure that without doing anything else, I have 18 languages that I not only can interact with, but I have articles already predefined in 18 languages. Yeah. This is great. And if you, of course, I mean, our, our content is, is, a, is a good starting point, and then you, you start building your own knowledge base. Yes. Yeah. And you can use the auto-translate function that we have into about 90 different languages. So with one click, you can translate any knowledge article to any language out of 90. Great. I think that covers most. <laughs> How many uh, articles do you have? We have about 50,000, even more. Wow. It, since we're creating new every day, it's hard to say exactly. But. Actually, I was speaking to a few customers the last few weeks about exactly this topic, and I found out that uh, most companies have less than 10,000, mm. and they create them themselves, update them themselves. But I guess you will talk about this anyway. Yeah. This is, but this is a big number. Yeah, it's, I like good. That. it's, it's a good, good starting point and a good support to have. So, let me see. Um, so this now we're talking about integrating these two tools that we have been talking about. So Shower Platform and Come Around Knowledge uh, Tool. So if you look at the Shower Platform from the end user view, you will here see how Come Around with the MAP integration can be integrated to the Shower interface. So from the main search field in the middle or you could click the get help further down on the left you will get to the knowledge base of come around or it will be your company's own knowledge base of course so it's really integrated and i really have not the feeling that i'm using two different tools right no and it's integrated on the platform so actually it is one tool yeah it is so two. one plus one equals one yeah interesting and that's when you get you get seamless not too bad. So, uh, I mentioned before that your support and service team, your agents, your employees, it's just as important for them to have a seamless workflow, for them to do their job as, as well as they possibly can, and uh, in a fast speed, of course. So, this is from their view. So, if you are an agent, this is what you would be able to see with the integration. So you search the come around knowledge base via the description field in Sharewell. So you can see on the right, you have suggested suggestions of knowledge articles from the knowledge base pop up here. You can use them, you can attach them to incidents or just refer to them. You don't need to open up another browser or window or tool. It's all included in the interface here. 
So search results are shown to the right and in the tab at the bottom. And articles can, can, can be previewed as well, of course, before you can use them and attach them to an incident to solve uh, an issue from a customer. And the agent search history in command, so article views and articles used, are shown at the bottom right. So there again, we would see really which ones are the articles and the issues, I would say, that people have most yeah. and give you the ability then to maybe be more proactive on exactly those ones and make sure those issues don't even come up and therefore actually reduce the number of calls and tickets you will get. Yeah, yeah it will, because if, you, if the customer are about to create an incident because they have a problem and then they get a suggestion of an article that matches their question. Well, they will read the article and hopefully the problem is solved and they don't need to create an incident. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And who is most happy about that? Probably the customer. Yeah, and I, I guess the support organization will not be unhappy too. Exactly. So I mean, less workload means more focus on the things that they really want to focus about, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of questions that come in, like I guess everyone else, are repetitive questions, same over again, and it's not so much fun to do the same thing again and again and there's simple questions coming in so instead they can focus on tougher problems which they will learn from as well. Mm. Yeah it's probably a little bit better than just doing password resets or something yeah. like that all day. Exactly. I'm a hundred percent with you on that. Yeah. So I think we should then really focus on the things that companies should do to make sure that they power, they use the power of knowledge, right? So what in your experience are the things that companies need really to think about to make sure that they really take the most out of their knowledge? Well, I think you, you, you should really start thinking about, you know, what are goals for knowledge? You need to define some goals. You need to know what you want to achieve. What could be goals for knowledge? Well, one goal could be, for example, offer self-service. Mm -hmm. That could be one goal. That's a new thing you're going to start with. So that is one goal, for example. Yeah. Uh, you want to have shorter resolution time. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you want to beat industry standards with knowledge, for example, within support. Oh, especially if you're trying to grow your support organization yeah. and you get, want to get experienced people, that could be a good starting point to show people, hey, you know what? We are faster generally than where you are right now. Yeah. So this is a good point not only for the people working, but maybe that can attract other people too. Yeah. And talent attraction is uh, one of the trickiest things we have nowadays. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to, for example, speed, speed up improvement of your, on your, of your services. So if you want to faster see, okay, what are our common problems, and you want to get them out of the of the environment faster. That could be one goal, for example. Yeah. And you can speed that up by 10% if you work really effectively with knowledge. 10% yeah, can be a lot in this case. Yeah, that can be a lot, for sure. Absolutely, great. So the second tip is to assess your current state of knowledge. So you need to know where you are today, uh, because otherwise you, you won't know what's between where you are today and your goal. I don't want to, to speak too blurry about companies in general, but is that something that companies really know nowadays? Do people think a lot about this, or is that something that in your experience you have to help people with? Well, when, when I meet new customers, they are they're quite often aware of, you know, they say, okay, I know that our knowledge base is messy, and yeah. we don't have a process, and that's what they know. Mm -hmm. they, know, they know that something is not really working, but they don't really know where to start. I understand, so yeah. Some come to us and say, okay, so can you, can you, for example, come to us and can you do an, like an assessment of our current state of knowledge, yeah. which we, we do? Uh, so that is a good way of finding out uh, what's your current state of knowledge today. <laughs> do you have any processes? What's your culture? You know, if you have a non-sharing culture, yeah. it's... It, it can be a challenge mm -hmm. to start sharing knowledge with each other in a common knowledge base if people feel that, okay, but I want to keep my expertise to myself. Yeah, I think, I hope those, those kind of attitudes get less and less 
while we get digital because most more, much more things get captured. But I see where you're getting with mm. this. This may be an issue that we have still nowadays, yeah. especially in competitive environments. Yeah, yes. for sure, for sure. And um, so there's different, different, many different areas. I mean, your tools is one way, one, something you could assess. Yeah. So do we have too many tools? Yeah. Do we have too few tools? Or do we need to integrate the tools? So probably the more tools I have, uh, the less effective it will be. I mean, we, we've covered that a little bit earlier, but if I just think about it, so it, it, it's really that I, I need to have a consolidated place where I can find answers to any kind of questions. Yeah. Otherwise, that will not be effective, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the last uh, sort of tip here, which is maybe the, the harder one, <laughs> <laughs> design a strategy and roadmap for knowledge. But if you know where you are today and you know where you want to go and you're quite clear on that, so to design a strategy and a roadmap for that, that is key in moving forward towards your goals, yeah. like in, in, a, in any topic or subject. Um, and of course, that could be, you could, you could use, uh, for example, I mean, the KCS methodology could be one thing. Okay, that's, we're going to start working um, according to that methodology. Or we, uh, we need to look at the tools we have. We want to build integrations and so on. So you need to design a strategy and a roadmap on how to get to your goals. Great. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, here, this is a really individual thing, right? Because, yeah. I mean, there is probably not a standard procedure or roadmap because this is always has to be aligned with where I am right now and where I want to go. Yeah. I understand. So this is probably something that uh, each company should discuss for themselves with their consultants, uh, hopefully a KCS consultant because that will be the one <laughs> that will help. I think uh, come around this would be a good person to talk to, a good company to talk to. You would be the person in this case. <laughs> Great. So I think uh, we have covered uh, what we want to cover. So uh, we have a few questions from the audience. So I would start here with uh, one actually that asked me, where do I find more about KCS and come around? So there it's uh, quite clear. We have some links. Uh, that is the thekcsacademy.net. So I repeat, thekcsacademy.net. It's all attached. You can find some information or also on www.serviceinnovation.org. Uh, another one that uh, comes twice actually is where I can find more about the integration. So the thing is, what, what you saw is cool. The integration is really shows that it is really integrated. We're not talking about a Java scripted uh, port that, uh, that, uh, that uh, throws away data from one side to another. No, we're talking about something that's embedded on the Chairwell platform. And actually, you can find anything on chairwell.com slash map exchange. So the map exchange, M A W P and exchange, is uh, the place where we have all the M apps. So the mergeable applications I mentioned earlier, there are around about 200. Interesting thing is uh, some are done and delivered by partners, some have been done by Chairwell, and some have been also uh, developed by customers. They were using it for themselves to do whatever and realized, hey, maybe that is good for other companies too. Some are for free, some cost a little bit of money, but all in all, it gives you an easy way to extend and uh, why reinvent the wheel when we have already one that is round? <laughs> Good. What we also have a question is uh, how we can really make sure that people use the knowledge base to make sure that they don't use other tools. So I think uh, we covered that in a way. So the thing is, the more tools you have right now, the more they will go and uh, being used to go there. So the thing what you really need to do is to implement a process to make sure that people understand that there is one portal that will answer all questions. Mm. And I mean, it can be incentivized. I've seen companies actually really just tracking who submitted uh, the most uh, requests or who used the most knowledge articles and so on. And you can incentivize this with little gifts or whatever. And actually, that works quite well. You will always have 
some people who, for whatever reason, do not like that, prefer to call or still think that they're not updated. Uh, I think, for instance, Microsoft OneNote was uh, an example that was written in one of the questions. Uh, is still the, the truth, mm -hmm. but at some stage, if you have implemented and consolidated it and it is, and it is uh, keeping me updated, the people will have to learn and to understand that it is the place to go. Is it, does it uh, cover your experience too? Yes, it does. And I think, I mean, in this question here, uh, like you mentioned, so oh. other, th there will always be other forums for support. For example, Microsoft's forum for support for Microsoft. So, but I think let people go there. That's yeah. absolutely fine. Let them Google things. But the things that are specific to your organization, that's the ones you should definitely cover within your knowledge base and your yeah. self-service because th those things they cannot find elsewhere. And of course, if you can also cover things regarding other common applications and tools, uh, do that. But I don't think you should try and you should try and get people to your knowledge base. And the best way to do it is to have a fantastic knowledge base, mm -hmm. you know, that is searchable and findable and reusable. But don't stop them from going elsewhere. That would not make sense. Absolutely. I'm 100% with you. I see another question here that says, does the MF integration uh, of Comeron re replace the Chairwell knowledge base? Well, it does in a way because it is the knowledge base that is then integrated. And in this case, you won't need the Chairwell knowledge base anymore. No, if so, you decide to have yeah. the Comeron one. And, exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, the Chairwell's knowledge base, by the way, <laughs> works really well. The good thing about Tom Around, one of the good things we mentioned are really all those predefined articles that they have to many, many software instances. So it's not about uh, replacing per se any Chairwell functionality. It's really about adding value and the value that uh, Tom Around provides here. I see another question also asked. We ask if KCS works well with ServiceNow. So you will uh, correct me if I'm wrong. KCS is a ma methodology. Yep. It is about, it's his knowledge standard services. So obviously it would work with any kind of uh, solution that you are using. IT service management, enterprise service management is one thing. The knowledge base and the knowledge management is another one. So at the end of the day, KCS provides a framework. Yeah which you find yourself and it doesn't really matter if you use ServiceNow, if you use Chairwell, if you use whatever else is on the market. However, I would strongly recommend if you use ServiceNow, have a look at Chairwell right now and you'll be maybe a happier customer next year. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some specific things that are sort of required to work really well with, with KCS. Uh, and I can't say exactly what, each, what kind of functionality each tool has but um, I can help the person with a question um, to, to define the things that you should really specifically look for in tools if you want to work KCS. Great. So I think time is up. Absolutely. So we will finish uh, it in uh, one minute. So there are still a few questions from the audience. I will take them uh, separately. So first of all, Helene, I would like to thank you so much for your time. I would like to thank you for all your knowledge and your expertise that you bring in. I really had a good, good time talking to you and I learned a lot today. I hope it's the same for people in the audience. I would like to thank everyone who took the time to listen to us and uh, look at the few slides we had to show you. I hope you learned something. If you want to know, know more, please contact me, contact Helen directly. You can go on chairwell.com or on comeround.com, find more information. Uh, leave your personal data. Maybe we will call you. <laughs> we'll be more than happy to have conversations with you to help you power your services with your knowledge. Thank you so much.